by this door mainly because I think Tim's going to be set up right out here. So. 75. 75. Well, that's good, amen? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm still amazed that uh, he would save an old sinner like me. But boy, I'm glad he did, amen? All right, you go ahead and be finding in your Bibles Matthew 16. I, 16 I'm going to be sharing very briefly uh, on our focus for the future. Focusing on the future. Matthew chapter number 16. As you're turning, let me give you a couple of uh, uh, instructions. Uh, right after uh, the, the, the last choir song will be the benediction. So when they finish the last choir song uh, here in just a moment, and our ladies, uh, the, of course the ladies are going to play the post lute after that, but as soon as the choir uh, sings their last song, when they finish, that'll be the conclusion of our service. If you are staying for dinner on the grounds, we want you to exit through this door uh, right over here to my left, your right, because you'll go down the steps and the food will be right there for you. You'll get in line, you'll go through. And uh, those of you that stay, we ask that you go through the fellowship hall and begin uh, being seated in uh, Miss Verna's classroom on the bottom floor of our new building. So let's uh, fill that room up first before we come out into the fellowship hall. And some of us, it's such a beautiful day, we may want to take a plate outside, drop our tailgate, sit on it, and eat and have some fellowship. So that's the instructions, all right? We do have some ornaments for sale as well. Just see Miss Brenda or Miss Sally, um, and then uh, also our booklets. And uh, as Miss Brenda said, we ask you to take uh, one booklet per family. Where are those booklets, Miss Brenda? Right here and at the back. Right here and at the back. So make sure you grab one of those. <laughs> All right, very quickly, I want all of the men and women here today that have been called out of the ministry uh, from Blue Ridge View Baptist Church into other areas of ministry. I want you to stand right now if we have anybody. I know Miss Evelyn's here, Joey's here, Brother Randy's here. Uh, Tommy Howard's here, Miss Sharon Hawkins, Billy Holder, and then uh, Mark Krieger obviously couldn't be here. He's pastoring over at Northside. Ross Estep couldn't be here. He's at Crescent Hill. Um, uh, uh, who am I missing? Buckshot Avan. Man. <laughs> How do, you, how do you forget a name like Buckshot? <laughs> Buckshot Avant is uh, in Pelzer at Tabernacle Baptist Church. Who else am I missing? Anybody? Anybody? Terry Bradley's not here today. He was called out of Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. Hey, God's done some amazing things. Amen? Amen. amen. All right, you go ahead and be seated. And then, amen. Amen. You'll look through that booklet that you got. We have a letter from Brother Clarence. We also have a letter from Brother Barry Dilworth. We have a letter from the Copelands. And then uh, Brother Joey was not on time. He sent me his late, so it's not in the book. <laughs> Brother Joey just wanted to take a minute to thank the Lord for allowing him to be a small part of the ministry of the best church around. Amen? Amen. I had the privilege of being the student pastor here for 10 plus years. God allowed me to work with some amazing young people and adult leaders. Every student that came through our student ministry has had a huge impact on me and my family. I can honestly say that we cared for and loved every student that came through the ministry. Blue Ridge View, I can't thank you enough for always supporting us. You are the best. I also had the honor in working beside and with a God-fearing, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching pastor that I love very much. Pastor Stewart has taught me so much about the ministry and being the spiritual leader in my home. I still call him my pastor and consider him to be a very close friend and the best looking pastor I know. <laughs> Blue Ridge View Church, you have something special up here on the hill. I'll always be proud to call this my church home. It's where me and my entire family were baptized so that alone will always hold a, hold a special place in my heart. On behalf of me and my family, we want to say we love you all and we continue to pray for this sweet church. Happy anniversary in Christ. 
Joey and Brantley, Bryson and Bella. Amen. Amen. And make sure make sure you look through your booklet to see the other letters that were sent in from some of those called out from the ministry at Blue Ridge View. Focusing on the future. Matthew chapter 13 or Matthew chapter 16 and I want to read just a couple of verses here in Matthew 16. Bible says in verse 13, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? The, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say you are John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against Amen. it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he char then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus Christ. Tell no man at that time. You know what? I love the church. I, I love uh, not only going to church, I love working for the church. I, I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago that uh, me and my family were talking about, I believe it was me and Harrison. I just, I just told Harrison, I said, man, I, I just love being in church. I just love to go to the church. I love the body of Christ. You know, many, many great institutions have come and gone, many wonders of this world that we have had. Most of them are gone. They've been destroyed, uh, they're outdated, they're forgotten. You think with me about the hanging gardens of Babylon. Think with me about the stat statue of Zeus at Olympia. The temple of Artemis at Ephesus. The mausoleum in Egypt. The Colosseum of Rhodes. The lighthouse of Alexandria. And the great pyramid of Jesus. You may recognize that list as comprising what is now known as the seven ancient wonders of the world. Now the reason they were called wonders is because at the time they existed, uh, they were seen as the greatest man-made structures on earth. They may have been great, but only one of those are still standing today, and that is the Great Pyramid of Jesus. They were legendary, but they were not lasting. Listen to me this morning, Blue Ridge View. The greatest wonder on this earth, the greatest wonder in the world is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church has been in existence over 2,000 years and it will have no end. You see, you can't kill the church, you can't destroy the church, you can't tear her down. Why is that, preacher? It's because her founder is Jesus Christ. It's because her foundation is is Jesus Christ. Her faith is Jesus. Her future is Jesus. And Jesus is eternal. Jesus is never ending. He's everlasting. I believe the greatest privilege in all the world is to be a member of the greatest institution on earth, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I know that we have uh, the doomsdayers in our day. I know most people or a lot of people are saying today that the church is on the way out. Well, they don't know how right they are. We've been called out. We've been sent out. And one of these days we're going to leave out of this world. Amen. Hey, listen to me. As we celebrate our 100th anniversary, I want us today to make a fresh commitment to His church. Because he, he made the ultimate commitment to us. I want Blue Ridge View Baptist Church to be a, uh, the body of Christ to thrive as we move forward, as we win souls, as we touch this community, as we go to the nations and help each other out inside the body of Christ. We have remembered today our past. We have celebrated today <laughs> our present. So let's focus on the future for the next few minutes as a church. Now you say, preacher, you're always uh, talking about why are you so up on the church? Why do you always stress the church? Why are you always preaching about commitment and faithfulness 
to the church. Well, I'm going to let the Word of God speak this morning. And there are a couple of things that I want you to see of what Christ said here in verses 13 through 17. Notice, first of all, we, we need to be reminded today of the supreme creator of the church. You find it there in verses 13 through 16. I believe this morning that if you want to be in right relationship to the Lord, then uh, there is the truth that somewhere along the line, you have to be rightly related to the church. I mean, if you get saved, you ought to be involved in church. Amen? Amen. I believe when you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will make much of what Jesus made much of, and that is the church. But listen to me, if indeed you desire to be right with the church, you've got to be right with the founder of the church, the Lord Jesus. There are many that are members of the church today, but they're not rightly related to the Savior. That's all they are. They're, they're members of an institution, but they've never been saved. Now, I want you to notice in verse 13, I want you to notice, first of all, Christ's public interrogation. Whom do you say that I am? Who do you guys say that I am? Now, notice what, uh, what they said. They said, Master, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say that you're one of the prophets. You see, just as today... There were a million different views of Jesus Christ. Everybody had an opinion. Uh, uh, Jesus is a, a preacher. Jesus is a, a good man. Jesus is a prophet. Jesus is a teacher. Jesus is one of many ways to heaven. But listen to me. While public opinion may vary, the most important thing is not what others say about Jesus. It is what you say and I say individually that matters. So this morning, who do you say Jesus Christ is? Well, I, I call Him my Savior. I say He's the Son of the living God. Amen? I say He's God in flesh, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died a substitutionary death, had a supernatural resurrection from the grave, and He's coming back one day to take His church away. Amen? But notice not only Christ's public interrogation, notice uh, Christ's private investigation. In verse 15, Jesus is adamantly interested in your personal conviction about Him. That's the question. Who do you say that Jesus is? Now, friend, listen to me. That's important. That's important when it comes to your eternal soul. It doesn't matter what I think about Him. It doesn't matter what your parents tried to tell you about Him. The only thing that matters is what do you think about Jesus? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. Christ's interrogation and investigation led to Peter's proclamation about the Lord Jesus Christ. He confessed Jesus the same way we ought, we ought to confess Jesus every day and into the future. We should confess Him outwardly, publicly, boldly, verbally, and dogmatically. There's public interrogation. There's private investigation. But notice Christ's powerful illustration in verse number 18. Notice what he says in verse number 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look now, that word Peter comes from the Greek word Petros, or Petros. P-E-T-R-O-S. It's the masculine form of the Greek word, which means a, a small stone, a, a tiny pebble, a little rock. But when he says, upon this rock, I will build my church, that word rock comes from Petra, P-E-T-R-A. It means a slab of a rock. It, even a mountain, something that is immovable, standing strong. Think with me about Table Rock. If you go visit Table Rock, you can go to the base of that mountain and you can pick up all kind of stones. You can pick up all kind of pebbles, pieces of that rock. That is, uh, the stone is a Petros. But the mountain, that slab of rock, is the Petra. And so Jesus is saying, you are Peter, a little stone, but upon this Petra, the mountain, I will build my church. Now you say, preacher, who is that rock? What is that rock? The Petra. 
What is that immovable fortress, the mountain, it, uh, the foundation stone? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says that that rock was Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, regardless of what the church at Rome has to say, regardless of what any other denomination or institution has to say, the only man that we will ever exalt in the church is the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friend, He's the Lord of the church. We can trust Him. Amen? Amen. He's the leader of the church. We can follow Him. He's the lover of the church and we can love Him back. Amen? Amen. So as we focus on our future as a church, let's be reminded this morning as we move ahead that Jesus is the supreme creator of the church. But I want you to notice the second thing. Notice the supernatural confession of the church. We find first of all the realization of Peter in verse 16. Peter says you're the Christ, the son of the living God. The supernatural confession of Peter is the fact of what it implies and testifies to. It testifies to the creator of the church, the founder of the church, God the Son. He is divine and He's human. Amen? Amen. That's a supernatural confession that we're to tell this lost world, my friend. And then notice the revelation of the Lord in verse 17. He says uh, in verse 17, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now Peter had given the right answer to the right question, but it was not because of his intelligence or his insight. When we confess Jesus to others, it is not because of some insight or intelligence that we have. It is all because of what he has done in our lives. That's basically what Christ is saying in verse 17. When Peter made that confession, it was because it had been revealed to him by God Almighty. Friend, you don't come to Jesus by figuring. You come to Jesus by faith. Amen. And so Blue Ridge View, in the days to come, we must continue to express the faith of the church. We're to be telling other people about the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the principle that we need to get this morning. That Christ take, that Christ gives us. And, and it takes all the pressure off of us now when we're going out and we're witnessing and trying to bring people to Jesus when we're soul winning and going to the nations. Here, here's what takes the pressure off of all of us. It is God who changes a person's life. Amen. It is God who can open blinded eyes to his saving faith. It is only God who can open deaf ears to his saving faith. It is only God that can bring a person from death unto life spiritually. Now listen to me. God may use preachers and preaching as he sees fit, but I'm telling you, it's not my sermon that saves anybody. It is the Savior. It is the Holy Spirit of God. Now listen, God doesn't need me. He doesn't need you, but he has chosen to Amen. use you. And he's chosen to need me. That's why we've been commissioned to spread this confession of faith to win souls and lead people to Jesus. We do the sharing, but God does the saving. The church and the church alone has been delegated spiritual authority by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be reminded as we focus on the future that Jesus is the supreme creator of the church. Let us go into the future under the authority of the supernatural confession of the church. He is the Son of God. But there's a third truth this morning as we focus on our future. Let us be reminded today of the sole cornerstone of the church. Verse number 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail Against it. Now there are those today that believe that the church is built upon Simon Peter because Jesus calls Simon Peter a rock. But remember now, Jesus calls Simon Peter a small rock. He calls him a little rock. But then Jesus making a play on words uses another word for rock which means a rock ledge, a stratum of rock, a bedrock, a stone mountain, if you will. And he says, upon this rock. What rock is that, preacher? Here's the rock. That I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, and on this rock, the rock of Jesus, I will build my church. Friend, the church isn't built on Simon Peter. 
She's built on Jesus Christ. Thank, aren't you glad this morning that the church is not built on some human, fallen, yeah, sinful man? man. That's right. The church is built on the sinless one. If the church was built on a mere man, it would be nothing more than a mere institution. The Apostle Paul would say, For another foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. So as we focus on the future, we have one message to share to this world, and that is Jesus is Lord of all. It does not matter what this world may do to us. It doesn't matter how others may treat us. We are the church. And our foundation, our cornerstone, is the almighty, ever-reigning God of heaven and God of earth. Amen. The supreme creator of the church. The supernatural confession of the church. The sole cornerstone of the church. But here it is, Blue Ridge View. Listen to me. As we focus on our future, we don't have to worry what our long-range plans are. We don't have to wonder what our vision will be. We don't have to wonder where the Lord is leading us in the days to come. Why is that, preacher? Because of the sure commission of the church. Verse 19. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Church. There can absolutely be no mistake about our function. That's right. Our commission and function has been clearly outlined in the Word of God. And I want you to hear me this morning. There's no argument about this. This is not an option. It's an obligation. The Lord Jesus said to Simon Peter, I'm going to build my church. And then He says, I'll give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. The keys of the kingdom tell us of the sure commission of the church. Now, what do keys represent? They represent authority. If you have keys to this building, you've got some authority here. But they also represent responsibility. With the keys come a responsibility. I, I want you to understand, church, a powerful truth this morning. God has given to us, has entrusted to us the keys of the kingdom, which is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, Blue Ridge View, and I want to say this to every other church that may be represented here in this sanctuary, we're not some upscale, high-class country club. We are not some trophy case for glorified saints. We are a church charged with preaching the soul-saving message of Jesus Christ. One of my heroes, Dr. Adrian Rogers, dead and gone to heaven, he said, a church that has misused, abused, or neglected the keys is not just simply missing a blessing, it's guilty of high treason against heaven's king. Blue Ridge View, as we focus on our future, may we ever be mindful that we have the authority from heaven to share the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. And with that authority comes great responsibility. We must share it. We've been commanded and commissioned to share the gospel message. How many people are we bringing to Jesus Christ? Do you know some of us here today, without even, we've come to the house of God we come to the house of God without ever inviting a friend to attend. We come here and we sit and we soak it all in and then we think we've done God a favor when we come to church. Hey, now's the time. This morning is the time to ask ourselves, what am I doing for the body of Christ? It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Him. What on earth am I doing for heaven's sake? What are we doing to bring people to Jesus Christ? He's given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Hey, there, there's probably close to, to 400 in here this morning. If we reproduce ourselves twice this year individually, this time next year there'll be 1,200 people packed into this sanctuary somehow. That's right. We probably have to get a 10. <laughs> Those are sn souls snatched out of hell. Amen. And put on the road to heaven. But listen, if we do what we're supposed to do, we will train those we win to reproduce themselves. Now you think about that. You do the math. If I just win two this year and teach those two how to win, that's the principle of multiplication. But it's also in obedience to the command of Christ. 
Do you understand that, church? It's not about, it's not about building massive buildings. It's not about seeing if, if we can become the greatest, biggest church in Pickens County. It's all about obedience when it comes to this matter of the gospel. Amen. It's about doing what we've been commissioned by God to do. We have no choice but to grow if we're following His command. I'm telling you this morning, listen, listen. Christianity has not failed. It's just not been tried. We're going to sit back here and say that with all of our praying and listening and weeping and loving and yearning and learning, are we going to say we couldn't bring two souls to Jesus in a year? I've got even better news this morning as we focus on our future. And listen to me. If something doesn't change, you and I in our lifetime, in this country, we're going to see severe persecution on us as a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. But here's the good news as we face that crisis. The certain continuation of the church. Right. Yes. I know the church will reign and continue and progress because I believe the word of God. Amen. Amen. Notice Christ's words. I will build my church in verse 18. That speaks of the fact of her future. This is the first mention of the church in the New Testament. It's the only prediction Jesus made about the establishment of the church. When Jesus said, I will build my church, he gave the strongest possible guarantee of the church's ultimate success. It is his church that he is building. He's building his church. We're not building the church for Jesus. Jesus is building her for us. Amen? <laughs> Understand that. That's important because anything that I build or you build or the world builds, it's ultimately going to crumble. But His building is eternal. When God builds a house for His people, it will last forever. But when we try to build something for God, it doesn't last, last very long. You ask King David. King David thought the best thing he could do to honor God was to build a magnificent temple that would stand forever. But he didn't even get to build. Solomon built. And it only lasted until 589 B.C. The second temple, Zerubbabel's temple, stood from 527 to 168 B.C. The final temple, Herod's temple, was built in A.D. 19 and destroyed by the Romans in A.D. 70. You see, our buildings for God are futile. His building for us is forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Notice also the foundation of her future in verse 18. The reason why we ought to be excited about the church and her future is because of her foundation. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not only the creator, he's the cornerstone Amen. of the church. Amen. It says, Peter, you're one stone. I'm the foundational mountain. Peter, you're one pebble. I'm the foundational mountain. Jesus laid that first stone upon that foundation and ever since Jesus has been, been building the church stone by stone on the rock which is Christ himself. Peter said you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You know what? Jesus is the builder, we're just the bricks. And the mortar that holds us together is the grace of God, the faith of the saints, and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. This building right here is just that. It's a building. We right here are the church. This building is nothing more than a barn for sheep. God's sheep. Too many people today confuse the church with a location, confuse the church with a building. Hey, many of those folks that were in the path of that hurricane and saw terrible destruction, and I, I've seen preachers talking about it. Listen to me. They saw terrible destruction to their church. Hey, the building may have crumbled, but their church is standing tall today. Amen. Amen. Then notice the fight of the church. Jesus promised, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. You know what he said? What he was saying was Jesus said hell won't be able to stop his building program. Amen. Gates are defensive weapons. Hey, listen. It's not our job to stop hell. Are you listening to him? The choir say amen. amen. It's not our job to stop hell. It's hell's job to stop us. Amen. Amen, preacher. 
I want to tell you something else, my friend. If, if you're not a part of the church, if you're away from the church, you have left, I believe, the safest place to keep the forces of hell from overrunning your hey, life. That's right. hey. Literally means, Hades, hell literally means the abode of the dead. We are to be daily storming the gates of death and hell. That's our job. That's our purpose, church. Our, our commission, the gates of spiritual death, the gates of emotional death, personal death, knowing that victory will always be ours. Now, I want you to think about everything the church has gone through since its establishment. Go back to 2,000 years. To when Jesus made this statement, when Jesus was walking down that dusty path and made this statement, he was one solitary man called of God to redeem the world. Later he would go and he would pick out 12 men to follow him. Of those 12, one didn't make it. On the morning of Pentecost, there were 120 believers, but on the first day of Pentecost, the church mushroomed to 3,000 in one day. In A.D. 45, roughly 10 years after Jesus had died and had been raised from the dead, it is estimated that there were 100,000 Christians. By the year 300, there were 12 million Christians. By the year 1,000, 50 million Christians. By 1,500, there were 100 million Christians. By 1,800, there were 200 million Christians. And it is estimated today that 1.9 billion people profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in the 20th century, more people came to Jesus Christ than in the 1900 years combined. There's only one way to explain that. Jesus said, I will build my church. He has been building in the past. He is building in the present. He will build in the future. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. I want to close by telling you about a man who hired a carpenter to build a fence. And here's what he said to that carpenter. He said, I want you to build a fence four feet high. But I want you to not only, I, I, I want you not only to guarantee me that it'll be four feet high, but I want you to guarantee me that it will never fall. And so the carpenter thought about that for a few days and thought about it for a moment. And, and he said, now to build a, a four foot high fence, that's not so bad. But to guarantee that it will never fall, he told that man, he said, now that's going to be some taking. Well, that carpenter thought on it for a few days and then he called the man up. He said, I'm going to build your fence and I'll let you know when it's finished. One day the man got a phone call and he said, I, I'm ready to collect my money. The man on the other end said, well, is my fence four feet high? That carpenter said to the inch, he said, will it fall down? The man said, it is absolutely impossible for this fence to ever fall down. And the man said, how can you assure me of that? And that carpenter said, well, I not only built it four feet high, I built it five feet thick so that if it does fall down, it will be a foot higher than before, or than it was before it fell. <laughs> Blue Ridge View, as we focus on our future, Let's be reminded, no matter what may come, the church is the only institution on earth guaranteed to last until the end of time. There's a difference between walking into a building, getting inside of a building, and being in a building. Jesus wants you to be a part of the church, His body. You asked me this morning about our future. Where is it we're going, preacher? I'll tell you where we're going. We're going to the children. Share the gospel. We're going to the adults. Share the gospel. We're going to the youth. Share the gospel. We're going to the up and out. We're going to the down and out. We're going to the red, yellow, black, and white. And we're going to share the gospel with them. We're going to go to our community. We're going to go to our city. We're going to go to our state. We're going to our nation. 